thank you sir and uh, okay sir once again a warm welcome to salman sir to focus on thank the you fun. sir thank you thank you ankur sir and thank you ray sir for all the wonderful comments that you have made okay. for the illicit white shirt um but you should know that i can never steal your light thank you sir thank you it's my privilege welcome all right so i'll be sharing my screen now for the pharmaco part now <clears throat> Okay, so we have already looked at the micro aspect of this disease. And now, going back to what is the main important receptor for the COVID? So for that, let's recap a little bit. You know, like to control the blood pressure in our body, we have a system called as RAS, that stands for Renin-Angiotensin-Aldosterone System. So the angiotensin in that, we have two of them. Angiotensin 1 gets converted to angiotensin 2. Right. The word itself kind of teaches us something. Angio means vessels and tension means constriction. Right. So angiotensin 2, it goes and acts on the receptor called as AT1 receptor, which in turn causes vasoconstriction and increase in the inflammation. See, the major player here is vasoconstriction. This is why to control this, we have the drugs like ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. Right. So this is one aspect that we generally focus on pharmacology, right? We don't pay much heed towards this one that angiotensin is then metabolized into a substance called as angiotensin 127. And this is happening by the enzyme known as ACE2. And as Kunal sir has mentioned already, this is the main receptor that is affected by the COVID or technically the SARS coronavirus, coronavirus. Okay. And this is abundantly found inside the lungs, especially in the type two pneumocytes, but it is also found in some other places like heart, kidneys, etc. So that can explain why uh, this can contribute towards the multi-organ failure. All right. So if you watch closely now, the AT1 receptor, what we generally talk about, it causes vasoconstriction and it increases inflammation. And on the other hand, the ACE2, when it metabolizes the angiotensin 2, this guy, AT127, will cause vasodilation and decrease in inflammation. In short, they are exactly opposite to each other. That means to create a fine balance in the body. Now, what the virus does is that it will block the functioning of ACE2 here. The coronavirus, it blocks the functioning of the ACE2. That means we will have excess action of AT1 receptors, meaning we can have more vasoconstriction and more inflammation. This is one of the things that is contributing towards, right? The cytokine storm, the word that is being used, right? Excessive inflammation going on in the patients. It's called as cytokine storm. So this could be one of the contributory factors for this. So now with this knowledge, we understand where ACE2s are present. What is the function? Now let's look at the cycle of the virus. How does it replicate inside our cells? Okay. Now, if you see this, let's imagine this is some cell of the body, let's say type 2 pneumocytes, all right? So ACE2, this is the purple color thing, as you see, this is the receptor that is binding the virus, okay? Now, once the virus binds here, I told you, viruses are always intracellular. They have to come replicate inside our cells. So for this to happen, there are one more interaction. We have something called by the name of TMPRSS2 which stands for transmembrane. If you see it's present at the membrane, it's called as transmembrane, PR for protease, serine 2. Transmembrane protease, serine 2. Okay, so interaction with ACE2 and TMPR SS2, this allows the virus to come inside. Now, once it is inside, it is taken by the endosomes, right? It is taken up by the endosome by a process called as endocytosis. So as you see here, this is the endosome what I'm pointing at. And what does this endosome has is it has acidic pH. It has acidic pH. And this acidic pH is important to remove the capsule, nucleocapsid, et cetera, or the envelope from the virus. So once the acidic pH removes everything, if you see in the next arrow, the enzymes and the RNA, viral RNA is released. 
Okay, so this acidic pH is the one that is lysing everything else, and then the viral RNA is released. Now, I told you the mRNA that is, uh, I'm sorry, the coronavirus. It acts like a mRNA because it's a positive stranded or positive sense RNA virus. So that means it can start making its own proteins. So the first protein it will make right away is called as RNA dependent RNA polymerase. It's an enzyme. Okay, it's an enzyme required for making certain proteins and the RNA itself. Okay, and as you know, all the enzymes are proteins. All the enzymes are proteins. So first of all, any protein when it is made, it is big in size like this, and then by a protease enzyme, it would be broken down into smaller right proteins, which would be more functional. Okay, the longer ones, it would be broken down by an enzyme called as protease into small functional proteins. Now, what does this river uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase do now? Is it is actually picked up by certain things inside our cell called as importins, importins alpha or beta. As the name suggests, importin imports things into the nucleus. See, as of now, the virus is inside the cytoplasm, but the headquarters, the main thing inside our cell, is the nucleus, and this is going to be hijacked by the virus now. and who is helping it our cell structures called as importins importins are the things that will pick up these proteins which would be now called as the cargo proteins they would be now called as cargo because it's like a cargo that is going to go inside the nucleus so importins will take this rna dependent rna polymerase inside us that is inside the nucleus once it reaches here now the job is done the virus has achieved what it wanted to do the first thing the virus will do inside the nucleus is it will block the gene which is actually coding for the antiviral property that means it has went inside the bank and it has turned off all the security system of the bank that's what the virus does so once that is done it will now start making the viral copies rna copies and the structural proteins like s proteins etc as you may see here then the vi virus is packaged by the golgi apparatus exot cytosis happen and the virus is released now it goes affects the next cell that means one after other all the type 2 pneumocytes are being damaged and when you know the surfactant decreases because of the damage to this then you may have collapse and that is what is contributing to the dyspnea right so this is the story behind this and once this virus is exiting our macrophages can actually catch this and when they catch this they're giving the exaggerated response and that is nothing but your cytokine uh, storm here okay so that's the story just revising back quickly the virus enters by ace2 and tmprss2 endocytosis happen it should contain acidic ph to remove everything but the rna so rna is released here making something called as rna dependent rna polymerase it's a protein right so all enzymes are proteins so as i said the longer proteins would be broken down by protease enzyme and this will become functional now these would be taken up inside the nucleus the headquarters by importin and finally the story it will exit the cell now we have these as the targets here right each of these things can be targeted by our drugs now let me remind you once again doctors that none of the drugs are so far fda approved but they have shown to be efficient okay now the first thing is the fusion inhibitors or the entry inhibitors i told you the fusion is by things like as2 or the right transmembrane protease so hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine these are the drugs that block certain interactions that are required for this virus that is glycosylation of as2 and breakdown of the s2 they not only do the as2 and the s2 blocking spike protein blocking but they also change the ph of the endosome to alkaline i told you acidic ph is required to lyse or cut down everything and release the virus but if you change it to alkaline this would be helpful all right so this is done by hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine so as you know like there was a lot of uh, talks going on with this drug and right uh, us president mr trump made it much more popular but then there uh, later on came a controversy whether right it is very effective or not but for the indian exam i guess like it is used pretty popularly so many times if the question is asked we should expect hydroxychloroquine as the answer okay 
What are the side effects of chloroquine? Number one is it causes QT prolongation, QT prolongation on the ECG or also known as the torsades, torsades. Okay, so the risk would be much more increased in cardiovascular patients or if the patient is taking another drug called as azithromycin. Azithromycin is another drug that is used in COVID situation. Many countries earlier proposed to use HCQ plus azithromycin, which was causing a lot of cardiovascular problems, right? What is the management of torsad if it happens? Magnesium sulfate. One of the drugs that we can use to manage the torsads is magnesium sulfate, one gram of magnesium sulfate, right? And as Racer has already emphasized on this, what is the important side effect, right? One more with hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine, bull's eye maculopathy or the retinopathy, right? This would be another side effect. And uh, last thing, um, not everybody has G6PD deficiency, but this drug can also cause, right? Um, let's say hemolysis in the G6PD deficiency patients. Lastly, it has the highest volume of distribution. Chloroquine is the drug that has, right? one of the highest volume of distribution. Okay, so remember this. Let's say if they give you all are true or false kind of statement and accept. For that, remember these four important points I've given you here. Okay, now this is the idea related to this disease. Now, one more is the hydroxychloroquine and uh, chloroquine. They also has immunomodulatory properties, which also kind of helps you with the cytokine storm. So, Technically, according to mechanism of action, it shows pretty promising things. But again, since there are not a lot of studies being done, we cannot write comment exactly right how efficient this drug is. Okay, so that's the thing you should remember. And in the cytokine storm, the important things are interleukin 1, 6, TNF alpha, which are also pretty prominent in rheumatoid arthritis. These are the cytokines playing a pivotal role in the rheumatoid arthritis. So we block all the cytokines. This is the same reason why we are using the drugs of rheumatoid arthritis into the right COVID situation. Does that make sense? So cytokine storm and rheumatoid arthritis have increased in the same cytokines, pretty much same cytokines. That's why the drugs of rheumatoid arthritis are being tried in the right COVID situation. That's all for the first drug. Next up. The TMPRSS2, it can be inhibited by a drug called as camostat mesylate. Okay, it has been approved for pancreatitis in Japan, also for dengue fever, and it also has anticoagulant effects. Okay, another drug approved for influenza in United States, but it's not used in India, umifenovir. It inhibits the spike protein and TMPRSS2 interaction. So in short, what are the three drugs that we have to inhibit the entry of a virus. One is umefenovir, camostat, and hydroxychloroquine. And by the way, even the convalescent plasma therapy we are giving, the antibodies will also prevent the fusion of the virus if you take that. Okay. Next, the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. This is pretty much required for making the mRNA and the important proteins of the virus. This can be blocked by the drugs like remdesivir, remdesivir or galidesivir. So these are acting like the fake adenosine or guanosine, et cetera. This will fool the virus to take up the fake adenosine guanosine, and then the viral replication will stop because it's not the original adenosine or guanosine. So they will just compete with the original and win. That is the story here. So you can remember for the desperate virus, DES, desperate VIR for virus, we use remdesivir and galidesivir. Or in fact, you can give gali to the right virus. Next, ribavirin. It's a drug which is used for a lot of things. So ribavirin, right? This is for a lot of viruses. We can use this, but it has a lot of toxicities. Now, the latest addition is favipravir, favipravir. So this one damages the RNA polymerase. Remember, important side effect, right? Hyperuricemia. So three fusion inhibitors we talked about, three RNA-dependent RNA polymerase inhibitors, remdesivir, ribavirin, and favipravir. Okay, next, important. I told you important is the one that is allowing the virus to hijack our nucleus. So we can block the important also. I for I, important is blocked by the drug called as ivermectin. So this ivermectin, this is the drug which is already used for certain parasites like strongyloides, oncocerca that causes the river blindness and for scabies. 
and now it is a pretty popular drug when it comes to the covid treatment even in india right now ivermectin in combination with another drug called as doxycycline okay now protease inhibitors i told you the long protein uh, the long proteins should be cut short into smaller functional protein it is done by the protease enzyme you can block that proteins itself nothing will happen so these are drugs which are used in the hiv like lopinavir ritonavir or darunavir avir aids virus you can simply remember aids virus these are the drugs used generally for the hiv but now since protease is a common enzyme with a lot of viruses you can block it with this okay so these are also pretty popularly used lastly to control the uh, cytokine storm etc immune modulators like steroids you know steroids decrease inflammation etc so methylprednisolone or dexamethasone il6 inhibitor tocilizumab one of the most popular and pretty expensive drug pretty expensive drug right each vial roughly cost between 40000 plus onwards okay so il6 inhibitor tocilizumab next recent addition in the indian clinical trials is cd6 inhibitor cd6 is the right receptor that is present on the t cells it helps activate the t cells and t cells will do the inflammation again so if you want to decrease the inflammation block the cd6 so the t cells will not get activated so what is this new drug itolizumab itolizumab is the cd6 inhibitor as i mentioned earlier hydroxychloroquine also has immunomodulatory properties and lastly vegf right vascular endothelial growth factor inhibitor called as bevacizumab so important drugs out of this if i tell you one would be tocilizumab itolizumab hydroxychloroquine you already know about the steroids all right lastly to finish off the other miscellaneous drugs which are being tried is doxycycline right which is actually antibacterial drug which also has antiviral as well as immunomodulatory effects azithromycin remember it should not be combined with right um, hydroxychloroquine because together they can easily cause qt prolongation or for instance amiodarone any drug amoxicillin clavulanic acid so these two antibacterials like azithro and amoxiclav these two technically are to prevent the super uh, super infections from the bacteria all right zinc vitamin c these are the regular things and because the hypercoagulability is happening inside this patients due to the damage to the endothelium excess inflammation is damaging the endothelium also so coagulation pathway will start so one of the drugs we use there is enoxaparin enoxaparin as the name says parin it is a low molecular weight heparin it's a low molecular weight heparin so i think that's it for me so i'll just advise you one thing stay positive and corona negative thank you and all the very best to everyone that was uh, really a wonderful presentation about all the different type of drugs and where they act and how they can be used uh, that was really really great to hear from salman sir thank you very much sir uh, yeah salman sir that was really really nice to see all those different drugs